So on eBay, I bought four packs that were known to be defective. Just curious what the, what the problems with the pack were. I've only had the one failure, and that's the one I've done a previous video on, on the repair. So on, on that repair, as mentioned in detail, and also some other component details, it, it was Q12. So one of the packs out of the four do, does need the Q12 replaced and it should be fine. But the, the drawback is if you don't catch it soon enough like I did and like I mentioned on the video, it will drain the battery pack down to zero. And then so doing that, pretty much every battery in that pack, once it gets pulled down to zero, it's, it's beyond the, the point of, of return. I even have a couple in that battery pack that I done that, that I may have to eventually replace just they do they do okay and they equalize okay but i think as i run the battery on a run time i see that it, it doesn't hold up as well i believe those batteries are a lot weaker when they've been run down and they don't charge up as fully as the other series sales so over time i'm going to take a couple of these packs and i'm actually going to take the good sales out and probably replace my two but that's in the long run. Uh, to get one of them going, like I mentioned, I just got to replace that Q12, that Darlington transistor, and that one will be good. The other three, have, however, had a different failure. Um, two were the same and one other different one. One of them, when you take this connector off, when you take the connector from this, the bottom of the battery housing, or actually when it's still on housing, you can actually see it. There's a 3.0 millimeter, um, I'm assuming that's the trace of the fuse, because it says F1. It's like a little board soldered on, but apparently that's a three millimeter solder trace, and that is what they're using for the fuse. Now the, the fuse didn't blow on the pack that I had, but the trace going from the wire, the positive battery wire, which I've, I've unsoldered from that cell, because that's actually cell uh, B14 that I had bad, it actually goes up and solders onto the board and comes through, and right here, it should join to this side of the fuse. And either the trace had went away or it looks like there's some vias. It may even be using the vias to get across. But either way, the, the pack showed good and the fuse was good. So I think all that happened was the uh, path of resistance across from, from this side of the fuse. Because this side of the fuse goes over to the battery pack terminal. And that ohmed good, that ohmed good, the fuse ohmed good. It was just between these two. So I was able just to solder this and bridge across to this. Uh, part of the fuse and my battery pack you know that one it, it worked fine it charged up and it's fine because the battery is held good they were still above 50 volts got lucky on that one because lithium will hold well if, if the cells are in good shape and it did it held well so that repaired one of them so that was two down but like I mentioned the one that all the batteries were shot in this one. Even though I can repair this BMS easy, all the all the cells were shot. And then the other two problem, it's actually cell 14. You can see how it's swollen compared to the others. It's got a taper. I don't know the uh, the inner part of the cell has swollen itself or if it's actually just that state changing sleeve that has changed to that shape. But, cell. So it was the cell in the other two packs. So two out of the four had faulty cells. One had the connection to the fuse from that connector. And one actually had a problem with Q12. So with that being said, I would make sure that all of the cells check good once you're able to get a battery and get all the potting off of it, like I have my original repair board, once you plug it up, you can go through and check your cells 
very easily and make sure that they stay balanced. So I was able to I was able to plug this one into all the batteries one by one and then go through and check and I could tell the ones that had a bad cell. As this one, it was it was actually reading zero. It was uh you could tell it was swollen, which it ended up just being that that sleeve was melted. But so I just thought I'd share that update with you and uh if you are having some problem with some cells you can be lucky enough to get a hold to a another bad pack and get some good ones out of it but unfortunately you can end up with a pack that maybe then depleted all the cells to no return so you have to be careful on what you get on that but overall buying the four that's bad and paying for shipping and up to say maybe even up to 15 bucks a piece i don't i don't think you can really go wrong if you're trying to repair your pack so so I just thought I would uh, would share the detail of a couple more pairs and uh, how they are different. If it helps out anybody else that may be having trouble with their pack. I know I got a few questions from that last video and some really good comments and I appreciate that. Any feedback is very helpful. And um, there's a few questions about other packs and all I have is a 2.5 amp hour uh, battery. I, I do not have any other pack at this time. But I hope you got some good information out of it. If you'd like to give it a thumbs up, please leave comments and thanks for watching.